think of Easter Island, you probably picture the giant beautiful stone statues. Now imagine Easter Island in the late Middle Ages when a man cut down the last tree on the island. Easter Island is said to be one of the most extreme examples of deforestation in the world. It's a striking story of the collapse of a whole ecosystem, of the collapse of a whole population. Without trees, food and fresh water supply quickly diminished and a battle for resources occurred. At the end, only a small population remained. And now we are the Easter Island. We, as a global society, make exactly the same mistakes. We overuse our resources. We overuse our planet. This is how we function. We buy, use, and throw away. The linear way of consuming is depleting our resources and is not sustainable. Actually, with our way of living, we consume the resources of 2.8 planet Earths, or more than five Earths if you live in the States. It gets worse with the growth of world population, which is 220,000 persons per day, or half of the city of Zurich every day. Scary, isn't it? The good news is there's a solution for our future. We can make it work step by step. The path is clear. We need to move away from a linear to a circular economy, from a buy, use, throw away mindset to one where we use the resources and the material for as long as possible in the production and consumption cycle. The most effective way to do this is if we use less materials, if we use fewer resources in the beginning. If we manage to decrease the raw material input, we also have less waste at the end, and we decrease the negative environmental effects along the entire value chain. And how do we become circular? I'm not going to tell you something revolutionary, but guide you through the many small pieces that add to a big picture of circular economy. Most people connect a circular economy with recycling, such as pet bottle collecting and recycling. This is actually part of it, but it's an action only at the end of the material cycle. But we can start much earlier. The next step after minimizing raw material input is circular production and design. Products are produced to last long, be repaired easily, and at the end of life, materials can be used again. Companies profit from new circular business models, such as products as a service. This means they offer a full service together with their long-lasting, robust products. And customers don't use, uh, don't buy and own a product anymore, but they use or rent it for a recurring fee. There are many existing examples, such as the Swiss company, Fauzug, who is renting washing machines and dishwashers, or light as a service, as offered by Philips or Trilux. Once the products have reached the customers, we should try to keep them for as long as possible in the use and consumption phase. We can do this with closing the so-called inner loops of the cycle, of the product cycle, with reuse, repair, refurbish, and share. So let's have a look at what the citizens of Zurich can do to support circularity. Everybody can put his or her unwanted items back to use. And the city of Zurich has a cargo tram with a swap and reuse place, which is touring around the city. People can bring the items that they don't need or don't want anymore, and other can take them for free. About 90% of all the items left find a new owner. There are also many secondhand shops. Uh, such as the new new 
the Caritas shops, the Brockenhäuser, or platforms like Ricardo and Tutti. Last summer, I was planning a hiking trip up north, and for that, I needed good outdoor equipment, different gels for all weather conditions. Yes, I could have bought everything new, but I found all I needed in the second pick, a second-hand outdoor shop. For example, a waterproof outer shell jacket and trousers and a practical hiking bag. It was great quality for a much better price. Another circular solution which is prolonging the life of the products is repairing. Almost half of all electrical devices disposed of in Switzerland still function. And this truly is a waste of resources. Let me give you another example. When I was a teenager, I bought this epilator. Unfortunately, it stopped working soon after the warranty had expired. Fortunately, I had a friend who could repair it. It was actually quite easy. He only had to remove the little on and off switch and the epilator still works more than 35 years after its breakdown. So today, there are many repair cafes or repair shops where you can have uh, your electronics fixed or mend the garments, such as FabLab or Recreas. The challenge, though, with repairing is that there are many cheap items on the market, cheap electronics or fast fashion, that don't last long or couldn't be repaired at all. And the costs for repairing often are too expensive for the cheap items. So we as consumers, we could try to buy products that last longer and possibly could also be repaired. To support repairing, the city of Zurich is looking into the possibility to provide repair vouchers for their citizens. So refurbishment and remanufacturing is another circular approach which is prolonging the life of the products. In the city administration, we have furniture such as office chairs, which are refurbished. For instance, the fabric coverings of the chairs are renewed after some time of use. Another well-known and well-established circular solution is renting and sharing. Maybe some of you still remember that we used to buy and own records, CDs and videotapes, yet Netflix and Spotify are well-established sharing solutions. So we as consumers, we could try to help establishing more of those solutions by asking for them. For example, solutions for babies. Babies grow out so fast of everything, so why not rent a standard set of baby clothes by Oi 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 or a stroller by Loopy instead of buying everything new? With the growing baby, the clothes that don't fit anymore or the stroller which is too small could be exchanged to a new set or a new model when needed. So reuse, repair, refurbish and share are the very important inner loops of the resource cycle and key to a circular economy. These inner loops are also called the product cycle. Once a product has reached the end of its use, we can still try to reuse the materials with recycling. And thus, we close the outer cycle, the material cycle. Recycling actually is important, especially in the building sector. In the city of Zurich, we have recycled concrete for almost 20 years now. The idea to use demolition concrete, demolition waste, to build new buildings was initiated by two city architects who joined with an industrial partner. Together, 
they made this solution work. And soon later, the use of recycled concrete became mandatory for all public buildings, such as public schools or the new art museum. In summary, what is the role of a city to boost a circular economy? Cities need to be role models and leading by good examples. That's why the city of Zurich has a circle economy strategy as the first city of Switzerland. Cities can boost the market by generating demand, such as for recycled concrete. Cities are uh, enablers they should support the circular transition with good framework conditions for companies, for startups, and for citizens. Cities can bring stakeholders together. Communication, cooperation, and collaboration are very important. Now, what is the role of the consumers? Let's try not to be like Easter Islanders. Let's try to move away from a linear way of consuming to a circular one. Buy less, and above all, less new things. Reuse, repair, refurbish, and share. And it takes people who take action. He, people who develop new, innovative ideas. People who demand new creative solutions, people at companies who want to make a business more circular, people in the city administration who are open to new circular solutions, people that question their own consumption and make the first step and then the next step. Imagine the future when we don't need virgin raw materials anymore and close the loops. Let's be part of that future. Let's take action. Let's go circular. <laughs>